Latin letter, uh, not just for this uh, introduction, but also for receiving me at SESTA uh, more than a year ago. Unfortunately, uh, we, we couldn't say a proper goodbye, uh -huh. uh, a hug as we do here in Brazil. Uh, so uh, I'm hugging you and all uh, people in SESTA that, that helping me uh, during that time uh, from uh, Brazil. Uh, but I also want to uh, to extend my my thank for um, for Giovanna uh, for uh, the support and for uh, her interesting in my research uh, since uh, she start uh, uh, being direct uh, direct of uh, SESTA. And um, I'd like to remember uh, to, to, to thank for Amanda and Brian who received me uh, very warmly. Uh, for Stanford uh, University for uh, uh, the opportunity to, to stay there doing research. It was a very, very a rich experience. Uh, unfortunately, uh, shorter than uh, I uh, planned. And uh, for uh, a friend I made there, uh, Leonardo Dubarleta, uh, he's from Brazil as well, and he helped me a lot, and uh, he became a friend. And for all uh, people that uh, came here today to uh, 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 to watch uh, my my presentation and uh, to talk about uh, Brazilian uh, 19th century illustrated press. So um, I'm going to start a reading. Um, I, I don't want to, to lose myself uh, in, in the time. Uh, let's go. Um, uh, let me start with a short explanation. Uh, creating a database by storing images like this, uh, this one, sorry. Oh, it is stuck, oh, here. Uh, uh, image like this, is a central part of my ongoing research on caricatures of African Brazilian people, both enslaved, free and emancipated individual, individuals published in the 19th century Brazilian illustrated press. This kind of press emerged, emerged in Brazil around the 1840s, but the boom occurred later in the 1860s. So I'm studying basically the second half of the 19th century, particularly magazines from Rio de Janeiro. Uh, my intention with this research is to look at one of the ways through which racism was generated in 19th century Brazil, paying attention uh, to stereotypes, arguments, and moments where they were at their strongest. In this particular sense, my focus is to argue that visual humor produced racism and to understand how it did so. Furthermore, I intend to see if and how can I have access to real African Brazilian behaviors and forms of social action and resistance by analyzing this kind of source. In this regard, I've been arguing that illustrated press was part of a major process of racialization, which was a main part of the pathway to, abol to abolition. The latter occupied a central place in the process I am studying, allowing me to understand the political rule of illustrated press. Uh, one image among many I've been collecting helped me introduce my argument. It is one of those very racist drawings that can be easily found in Brazilian illustrated press. Uh, it's not this one I'm, I'm showing. Uh, the caricature uh, shows two characters uh, positioned uh, face to face, uh, frente a frente in Portuguese. The subtitle uh, says frente a frente. Uh, one is a disproportionately big and very thin enslaved person who is meaning over a big footed and smaller figure, who back off frightened. Here, there are both particular and general elements. On the one hand, there is a whole social and political context to this image. The huge enslaved represent the slavery. He advances threatening, threateningly, or oh, some words are particularly difficult, uh, against an empire's grandee, identified as João Maurício Vanderlei, the Baron of Cotegipe, 
who is a pro-slavery advocate and then president of the Council of Ministers, a kind of prime ministers within the Brazilian uh, constitutional monarchy. Uh, at that moment, a new law of slavery had just been passed, known as the Sexagenarian Law or Saraiva Custegipe Law, a direct uh, reference to one of the, those uh, of the characters in the image. It was interpreted in the time as a law that favored the interests, the interests of pro-slavery groups. So the colossal, powerful, and furious slave was advancing threateningly against those responsible for approving a legal test, text that was harmful to him. Uh, there is a lot to say about the, character, the caricature, but uh, that's not the purpose of today's presentation. What does matter is using it to introduce my subject, the construction of a database built with images like this. Among so many enigmas and possible interpretation for the image I just described, I argue that illustrations like this have part of their meaning revealed under a different context, different from the one I just briefly outlined. I refer to an iconography context. This would be a set of visual reference knowing to uh, the uh, consumers of those uh, images, but not explicitly uh, or directly uh, revealed at the source. As a reader of magazines like this, I would say that my reading experience comes somehow close to that of the public of the time, when we come across a recurrent ways of meaning formation that somewhat create a sense of familiar familiarly, familiarity uh, and relate a given connotation to the manner in which the characters are drawn and the scene composition. Uh, an example, for me, thinness seems to be one of the ways to equate a black character uh, with being a threat. It would be a sort of revealing clue of this attribute a way of building and uh, highlighting a, lat a latent threat. In the sense, it would be by chance that the big head enslaved man from the image I just described bears exactly that threat. But this, as I said, is just an impression resu resulting from the large number of magazines, images uh, that I've uh, already seen in my research. An impression that, I insist, might have been part of the reading experience of those periodical books. This experience probably generated an effect and influenced in more or less conscious way the reader's perception. So the question is, is it possible to turn this impression into a real evidence? I believe so. By counting images and generating numbers, it is possible to reveal some patterns, turning an impression into objective data. Uh, and nobody uh, did something like that here in Brazil. Uh, at the same time, the database allowed me to gather some social and political context elements. Let's start with that. At the current point, the database has 1,768 images from 15 magazines. So far, there are 10 complete fields, name of the magazine, issue number, date of publication, page on which the image was publicate, uh, publicated, author of the image, relevance of the black character in the scene, whether central or uh, a detail, uh, character's gender, character's uh, condition, an enslaved person or a citizen, uh, character's color, and a uh, number of black characters in the scene. I've just added um, uh, one more uh, field related to the space in which the scene take, uh, takes place, whether public or private. And finally, I will enter the image themselves into the database, a necessary requirement for the creation of uh, other categories directly associated with 
uh, such iconography uh, context, context uh, just mentioned mentioned uh, here. Uh, I, I debate this uh, uh, this change with Zephyr when I was there, and well, I'm about to do this. My intention was to have carried out this work during the period. Uh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. As a visiting scholar at SESTA, but the pandemic uh, erupted before it was possible to complete this step of the research. And since then, our lives became a, a crazy uh, thing, especially here in Brazil. We have a, well, a, a huge problem here. Uh, before exploring the iconography, iconograph, iconographic context, some challenges and conclusions. Over the field condition and color, and enormous impression screens. I would even call it a complete absence of reliable standards concerning the diver diversity range of possibilities available in the slave society of Imperial Brazil. Regarding their condition, an Af African Brazilian could be a private enslaved individual or a nation's one uh, enslaved uh, belonging to the state. They could be free or many meeting a category also determ determined by whether the person was born in Africa or in Brazil. These two last categories might be mixed up in different ways. I explain. A man admitted uh, African would become an outcast because he wouldn't turn into uh, an, uh, an unwanted foreign since freedom uh, wouldn't guarantee him any uh, citizen uh, rights. Uh, a liberate African, uh, um Africano livre, as you say in Portuguese, uh, on the other hand, was a unique category, a category specific to those illegally uh, important after the law of November 7, uh, 1831, and uh, detained by the imperial authority. Uh, this no citizen status was guaranteed to this category either. Rather, they were a group who provide service to individuals or to the state. Those born in Brazil, called criolos in Portuguese, uh, had citizenship if manumitted, even though it was a limit, limited uh, citizenship as specified by a uh, constitution uh, of 1824. Conversely, a free person did have full citizenship rights. Well, none of that uh, is verifiable or measurable in the images. Very rare cases uh, provide some clue or reliable information about their condition, while information on birth is almost absent, as well as the uh, distinctive distinction between the statuses of emancipated or free. Roughly speaking, it's possible to identify the captives by their bare feet, and some information of the quality of the freedom is sometimes revealed in the subtitles. About the color, the confusion is even uh, greater. And the Russian language of 19th century Brazil was diverse. Those who wouldn't uh, fall into the category, category uh, white could be classified as black, uh, negro, uh, mulatto, uh, brown or pardo, uh, gold or, or cabra in Portuguese, fulus in Portuguese, a word whose meaning in Portuguese is close to pardo, uh, whitewashed, uh, Kayatus, uh, among uh, others. Uh, it's it's really, we have a lot of words uh, for color in, in 19th century Brazil. Uh, black and negro uh, were terms that could distinguish uh, a person uh, condition. Sometimes the term black uh, in Portuguese, preto, uh, was directly associated with slavery and negro was more ambiguous, meaning either an, an enslaved, a free or emancipated person. The other terms, uh, terms define people of mixed race heritage, uh, uh, a different category uh, that could be more distant from the universe of slavery, 
although it was not disconnected from it. Uh, in the advertisement published in the uh, October 12, uh, 1887 issue of uh, the Gazeta de Noticia, uh, an important daily newspaper in Rio de Janeiro, we can capture some of this sound. Uh, uh, I'm going to read in Portuguese just for you to, to uh, uh, listen a little bit how this uh, sounds. Uh, Aluga-se de casa particular, uma preta que cozinha, lava e passa roupa a ferro, uma mucama e um preto para servir para serviços leves na rua do hospício, número 268. E, and, and the next one, aluga-se para casa de família, com condição de não saírem à rua, duas raparigas pardas, pardas escravas, sabendo cozer, engomar, lavar is mais uh, arranjos de uma casa, a rua do pescador. Uh, this kind of uh, ad, uh, they are dreadful, uh, and we, we can find a lot of them in Brazilian newspapers. Uh, and uh, in the first ad, the black color, uma preta, is sufficient reference to define the cookie's condition, uh, condition as uh, unslaved, as well as the color of the man, um preto. Uh, uh, a black uh, man who would only perform light work. In the second ad, uh, the uh, two uh, girls offered the, for rent to a family home with the uh, proviso that they not be allowed outside were brown pardas in Portuguese, a term that de demanded further uh, explanation. They were enslaved uh, people. The Russian language in the 1800s Brazil was full of, full of subtleties, an aspect already uh, widely discussed, discussed by uh, the histor historiography of social meaning of color and uh, miscegenation mis in colonial and imperial Brazil. I won't go further in that matter here. For the purpose of this brief presentation, it is enough to state that those uh, 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 terms uh, bore various social uh, meanings. Uh, and this diversity in the overwhelming majority of cases is simply absent, absent in the images. If, uh, on the one hand, the difference between the social reality and the iconography uh, reality makes inaccurate the information yielded by the database. Uh, on the other hand, it reveals a value of the image, which by hypothesis might mirror a social sense of color disseminated among white readers of illustrated periodicals. I understand that overall uh, imprecision uh, was another way of attributing social meaning uh, to color. Generalization, in a way, would operate toward relating the non-white masses to the world of slavery. There would be a kind of direct relationship be uh, between non-white color and slavery, a sort of iconograph iconographic translation of a perception that define a social place for the non-white masses. Uh, that was a society in which the manumission rates were high, causing an increase uh, in the number of em emancipated and, Afri and free African Brazilian men and women in uh, relation to the captives, uh, the, further, the further the 19th century advanced. According to uh, the 1872 census, 17.9% of Brazilian uh, population was enslaved persons, almost the same number of Rio de Janeiro, which uh, was 17.79% uh, of enslaved. Still, the relationship between non-white color and slavery uh, would remain strong. This attribute of the image is consistent with uh, the research on the precarious, oh, I, this is a very tough word, the precariousness of uh, the African Brazilian population status of freedom. In principle, even in the second half of 19th century, the non-white color of the skin would 
uh, delineate the captive condition. And non-white people usually had the duty to prove their own status uh, of freedom. It was somehow uh, the reversal uh, of the classic legal uh, percept logic. The burden of proof is on the accused, not on the accuser. So said image seems to contribute to reinforcing his uh, precariousness by suppressing the meaning of color and by reinforcing the premise that in principle, in principle, uh, every non-white could be a potential enslaved person. It seems thus that the category black is dominant in the universe of the uh, caricatures, fitting the whole group of people not classified as white. But if the image are inaccurate regarding aspects uh, of color and condition. They are also valuable in others. Let's take a look at some images. Uh, the most interesting part of uh, my research, or as we say in Portuguese, let's see a cereja do bolo. Um, here we have a uh, uh, a, a, a scene uh, where uh, some slaves, but not uh, only slaves, are uh, going to uh, to have some water in uh, uh, fetching uh, public sources uh, uh, from uh, 1869, uh, Semana Ilustrada, uh, the, the magazine. Uh, here we have a capoeira from 1876. Uh, here uh, we have one of those uh, rare images where I, uh, we find uh, orig origin. Uh, they are both Africans, uh, slaves, Africans. Uh, uh, here uh, a, a, a caricature uh, of, of freedom, uh, some, some uh, enslaved uh, receiving their uh, free uh, freedom letters uh, from uh, uh, the municipality. Uh, uh, parliament, and here another uh, 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 caricature from uh, uh, the, the Indian uh, represent Brazil, uh, and he uh, in in this flag we can see abolition, and the women uh, is the represent represent liberty, and uh, she's freedom a a enslaved. Uh, here the emperor uh, Pedro II uh, during the uh, Paraguayan uh, war. Uh, and they are uh, uh, free, fr uh, freeing uh, some some enslaved uh, to serve uh, in the, the the Paraguayan War. Here, a very rare image where uh, a slave holder uh, uh, find uh, some enslaved reading a, a very important newspaper uh, called uh, O País, uh, the country uh, in English. Uh, here uh, we have a very important abolitionist. Uh, uh, Luis Gama, well, he's a, a, a very important uh, uh, abolitionist who unfortunately couldn't uh, see uh, the abolition uh, itself. He died uh, in 1882. Well, uh, this small set of images express diversity both uh, in the ways of drawing black characters and the situation in which they appear. They are, uh, there are several aspects to be observed. Uh, one can see specific social types, such as uh, the wedge earners, the ganhadores, né, os ganhadores in Portuguese, uh, uh, who could be enslaved or not, who walked on the streets carrying litters or transporting all sorts of cargo, from large cargo arriving on ships uh, to small parcels. Uh, the green grocers, as quitandeiras in Portuguese, who made their living selling fresh veggies and food on the streets were equally a frequent social type. Uh, there were also the capoeiras, uh, uh, dread individuals who walked around the city armed with a sharp edged knife or razors. They mastered the art of capoeira, a kind of martial art that was a sign of danger and uh, in the 1800s, uh, which later became an expression of nationality in the 20th century. 
20th century, uh, nurturing the distinctive ongoing fear of a slave society deeply defined by racial violence. But in addition to this uh, harder than objective aspect, the images reveal other interesting details which allowed us to go beyond the more evident social classification. I speak of details such as clothing, clothing, uh, which however scandalized uh, they may seem, uh, are sometimes drawn in a particular manner, a subtlety that paves the way to break up the thick layer of stereotypes that shape those prints. Uh, the place occupied by the characters in a scene, whether perifer peripheral or more central, can also offer some clues. Likewise, there are details even more uh, subtle, such as physical appearance, which uh, may be of a thin character uh, with large white eyes or fuller bodies that uh, make a more harmonious visual expression, perhaps, perhaps more palatable uh, to the visual standards uh, shared by those magazines readers. Finally, we have the complete image of submission in scenes where enslaved people are careful, carefully drawn below the white characters, uh, usually uh, with their heads down, scenes that produce an opposite impression from those uh, of the black characters drawn above the white ones, usually with their heads held high and with an aggressive posture. Thus, the meaning in, uh, intended to be created for African uh, Brazilian uh, characters were, uh, were as diverse as the way of drawing them. There was, in principle, a kind of particular and peculiar iconography language, iconographic language, able to form meanings independently uh, of verbal language. And this language, by hypothesis, allowed for different composition, further expanding the range of possible meanings. So the more I uh, 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 fill the database, the more I'm going to find this iconographic uh, uh, context I'm talking about. Uh, this scope of situation, social types, and ways of drawing the characters, uh, details, and comp uh, Compose, uh, composing the scenes, make, make the exercise of generate, generating numbers uh, about this type of document something particular, particularly uh, challenging and savory uh, at once. Uh, and it is exactly the subtleties that, together with the most objective data uh, I read collected in the bank, can be a way to achieve the goal uh, stated at the beginning of this presentation to transform my impression from reading illustrated periodicals into objective uh, data. As we move towards to the end of this presentation, let's take a look at some of uh, 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 at some numbers. Uh, as I've said before, I had so far collected a uh, thousand. 768 images from 15 different magazines. This number, uh, in principle, seems large. But as Machado de Assis teaches, Machado de Assis was a very important uh, African-Brazilian uh, writer. Uh, he's amazing. Uh, uh, but as Machado de Assis uh, teaches, the truth is that without being quite that. On the one hand, the, uh, uh, and thinking in absolute terms, the volume of ima images uh, represent substantial material, perhaps more than I have the cap uh, capacity to analyze. After all, each image gener generally corresponds to a whole universe of meaning, uh, meanings and possibilities of interpretation. On the other hand, the number is small. According to the 1872 census, uh, census the only general census taken in Imperial Brazil, uh, Rio de Janeiro was a black city. Over the 226,033 uh, free uh, inhabitants 
122,253 uh, were not defined as white, but uh, were divided according to the racial classification used in the census uh, between blacks and browns, uh, pardon, in the trees. Whites and the so-called caboclos, white and indigenous mixed-blooded individuals, totally uh, totaled uh, 103,708. The enslaved population counted separate, separately, total uh, 48,939. Therefore, 62% of the population of the neutral municipality, uh, the city of Rio de Janeiro, uh, was made up of non-white. Comparing to the numbers presented in the census with the data uh, collected uh, so far in the database is a delicate uh, task. Uh, there is a huge disproportion between the number uh, of African Brazilian characters in different magazines and similarly, uh, the presence of these uh, characters uh, in the weak lies is profoundly erratic, uh, oscillating in time according to different social and political aspects. For instance, whenever the capoeiras decide to harass the police authorities and white men, or whenever uh, some issue related to uh, the institution of slavery was in evidence, such as parliamentary debate uh, on the law uh, leading uh, to the end of slavery. Black characters uh, would flood, uh, flood uh, the scene uh, in the illustrated magazines. There were also important variation among the periodicals. On uh, one of them especially uh, constitutes uh, a particular problem which produce a percentage variance. Variance. I refer to uh, a character from the Semana Ilustrada, one of the most important magazines in circulation in Imperial Rio de Janeiro between uh, 1861 and 1875. Uh, uh, in addition to its long duration, this periodical was a reference among uh, the weeklies, constitu constituting an objective of criticism and uh, continuous debate uh, among the magazines. More importantly, there were two narrators in the weekly uh, called uh, Doutor Semana and uh, Molek. Uh, here they are. Uh, this is the front page of uh, one edition of uh, Semana Ilustrada. Uh, uh, from 1862, one of the, the beginning, uh, the, the first uh, editions. Uh, Molek was a uh, Dr. Semana's enslaved young servant and appeared in almost all issues, sometimes more than once in the same issues. It's like they, they uh, as the narrator, they, uh, uh, they, they uh, uh, tell a story, they uh, interpret uh, everyday life uh, news, so uh, they appear uh, almost uh, in every uh, issue. As interesting as this character, character is, uh, and he is fascinating indeed, uh, he also represents a statistical, a statistical problem. Given his presence, the numbers of African Brazilian characters in this periodical are disproportionately higher than in the other magazines. However, the number of black characters in the weekly get close to the rest of the periodicals when we uh, exclude, exclude Molek and his family from the count. Uh, and yes, uh, Molek has a story. He uh, gets married and uh, he has children. Uh, so they, they are, are telling us a story while we uh, 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 can see the news from their point of view. Mm, altogether, there are a thousand two images of African Brazilian in this weekly. Eight, uh, 895 uh, 95 of which uh, are of this character and his family. Considering that the magazine published about 2,496 images, 
the 107 drawings of African Brazilian characters without, without the presence of Molec make 4.2% uh, uh, of the total, a percentage particular uh, compatible with uh, that uh, of other periodicals. Following the Semana, the most expressive illustrated magazine was the Revista Ilustrada, the one I studied in my doctorate. Uh, due uh, to its representativeness and uh, to respect the time for this presentation, and I believe that I'm almost uh, there, uh, I'm choosing to uh, the statistical uh, uh, I'm closing this statistical exercise with it. Uh, illustrated and uh, uh, illustrated and directed by Angelo Agostini, a uh, Italian uh, a drawer. Uh, the Revista was considered uh, an abolitionist publication. Uh, oh, where is this one more page? Oh, sorry. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The over while well, the majority of the characters printed on its page uh, were not black. I found only 287 images uh, counting uh, black characters in uh, the issues between 1875 to 1898. Uh, of these, 260 are cases in which African Brazilian characters occupy a prominent place being the theme of the print. Although in Necker, the, uh, these numbers are expressive. In a simple account, uh, for the whole period, uh, period of uh, its existence, the weekly uh, published about 4,416 images. Therefore, only 6.5% of them feature black characters. This sum, for several reasons, is inaccurate. The number of black characters in the magazine was irregular, flu, uh, fluc fluctuating, flu fluctuating according to the circumstances and increasing, for instance, whenever some slavery related theme gained importance. In the 1880s, when abolitionist propaganda became intensified, uh, the, the, the abolition here in Brazil was in 1888. Uh, May uh, the 13th, uh, 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 186 images pop up, 64% uh, of the total, therefore. Regardless, uh, this proportion uh, follow as a rule. Compared with the data from the 1872 uh, census early uh, mentioned here, there is a stark disproportion uh, between those little more than 6% of black character and the six, uh, 64 of their presence in uh, reality. The black uh, reality of the streets of Rio de Janeiro contrasts with the white sand seen in the illustrated newspaper. This brief exercise uh, presenting numbers is quite pre preliminary. Uh, it serves to point out uh, the existence of a huge gap between the social reality and the iconographic reality. Understand the particularities of this visual universe and its uh, own reference and difference uh, in relation to the social world is a stimulating finding. Uh, as I move forward onto to the methodological path of generating numbers from imaginary uh, sources, and as the iconographic context, context gain uh, more outline contours, uh, the bridges between social reality and illustration will emerge. Though, thus, the missing link between the world of caricatures and the social reality lives precisely in the enormous difference between them. The universe of image, imagery uh, consists of a very different version in a certain uh, distorted sense of the social universe that serves as its reference. This difference, however contradictory it may seem, is what brings together the social and the visual context, making the one uh, to serve as a source for the understanding of the other. And so following this methodological path, 
I believe I can achieve the ambition of the large research from which the database is a part. I believe that I will be able to unveil one more mechanism for producing social inequality via race, as well as the many and always creative forms of resistance by the African Brazilian population in the Brazilian slave empire. Uh, that's all, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, uh, Marcelo. Thank you very much. So we can move on to questions. And um, if you have a question, you can raise the small hand and you can also unmute yourself so you can ask Marcelo himself or um, you can put it in the chat, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, Zephyr. Um, thank you, Marcelo, for um, a really uh, terrific presentation. And I'm, I'm excited to be hearing uh, some of the preliminary results that come from building this database. So my question, um, very briefly, is um, about uh, kind of, if you think about intersectional identities and the way that um, as you kind of opened up by describing all of the different subject positions, the different ways that people are categorized um, in Rio. Um, you had mentioned that you're coding for uh, gender as well as coding for all these other factors. And so my question is simply, um, if you've had a chance, maybe you can, you can tell us the, the early results are, um, do women appear um, kind of in proportion to their share of the population? Or I guess my hypothesis is that um, enslaved um, women or um, Afro-Brazilian women will appear even less frequently so that if, um, you already have a discrepancy between the 64% of the population that is not white, and but the representation that's appearing in these um, illustrated papers is 6.5%, 4. something percent. So yeah, so do, does gender also influence who's uh, appearing and how they appear? Um, is that something you've been able to discern so far? Um. Well, uh, so far I have some some very very preliminary numbers, but uh, uh, there is a huge uh, disproportion between uh, uh, male and uh, uh, men and and women. Uh, uh, the the huge uh, majority uh, of images uh, shows uh, men, and uh, so it's a disproportion from uh, the census itself. Uh, um, it, it, it's like a white society and the slavery is like uh, something uh, 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 basically for, for men. Uh, although in Brazilian society, uh, the rates of uh, uh, slavery in terms of gender, uh, usually uh, we have more uh, uh, men than women, but the, uh, uh, the disproportion in, in terms of uh, a caricature is higher than in, in, in reality. So uh, the, uh, it's it's another way to create uh, a, a particular context that I'm uh, talking about. So it's male uh, and uh, usually those images uh, where we can't uh, actually uh, know whether they are uh, slaves, uh, unslaved or not. Uh, but usually women is a very, very uh, uh, small uh, uh, number uh, in terms of percentage. Sometimes uh, I have some, uh, uh, some magazines where I can find 
uh, only mm, four or five inmates with uh, uh, women. And so uh, what is particularly uh, difficult to, to work with these uh, 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 numbers, uh, it is about the, uh, the difference, uh, the huge difference between uh, the, the, the magazines. So um, I can't uh, 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 answer you with a, a, a very uh, open uh, 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 approach uh, because um, the Revista Ilustrada is very different from, uh, for instance, from, uh, I don't know, Mequetref. So uh, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's, it's not a good numbers to, to, to share with right now. Uh, due to this uh, disproportion between each uh, magazines. Um, uh, I, I answer your question, Zephyr. Yes, <laughs> thank, okay. thank you, thank you. Yeah. So while we wait for um, others to potentially uh, get their, uh, oh, Giovanna, do you have a question? I don't know if you were uh, about to say something, I can wait. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, Marcelo, have you thought about how you might extend this um, uh, to the age of photography and kind mm -hmm. of, uh, and how like over a long durée of imagery in magazines and trying to study race and gender through uh, if it changes when kind of what some would say the democratizing ability of photography uh, comes about, even if the press is still controlled by a certain cadre of people. Mm -hmm. uh, yes and no. <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's a, a very, very uh, uh, um, interesting uh, uh, way to, to, to go. But uh, in 19th century Brazil, photography was uh, very widespread. It was very uh, uh, important, but uh, uh, it's very rare. I don't remember if we have, no, uh, photographers in the magazines, but we, we have some, some work, some, some, some research here about photography, especially photography about enslaved. So I can uh, compare those uh, images with uh, uh, photography, but usually photography was very posed. Uh, they were not natural. So um, uh, uh, I don't know uh, whether I can uh, compare these uh, two uh, 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 images. And when uh, my objective is to go uh, uh, to, to, to uh, my research go uh, after uh, uh, the, the slavery uh, ends. So in, this, in that moment, I probably will be able to compare some uh, photographies with uh, some uh, uh, characters, characters. But sometimes, uh, like the uh, image I showed uh, of uh, Luis Gama, that very uh, uh, amazing abolitionist, Brazilian abolitionists. Uh, sometimes those uh, 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 draws was uh, made from uh, pictures. So sometimes we have this kind of pictures and it was uh, 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 very unsure when we have a, a draw made from a, a, a photography or not. Uh, but uh, during the, 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 the very end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century, sometimes uh, it's uh, uh, possible to uh, exchange uh, these uh, this, this images. And sometimes I can share the idea uh, of uh, 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 the, 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 the races, uh, the, the scientific races can be uh, found in this kind of image not just because photography was one uh, of the ways uh, to produce uh, uh, the, the, the statistic number from uh, those scientific, scientists in 19th century, but uh, drawings was uh, a, a uh, way to do the same thing, not just here in Brazil, but uh, in different parts of the world. So yes, 
but not the, the same way, the same way I'm trying to, to do with caricatures. And there is a huge difference uh, because usually uh, uh, illustrated press try to show a uh, social uh, 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 life, something that actually happened, something like that. But photography, it's, 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 it's less, uh, 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 the, the intention, it, it was not to show uh, real life. So uh, the, the difference was uh, very, very huge between them. Uh, okay, thank you for your question. <laughs> thank you. Um, Star. Uh, thank you, Marcelo, for a great talk. I was very interested in kind of uh, the way you were kind of analyzing these sketches. Something that you said that stuck out to me was like the way you figured out if um, these characters were enslaved or free, like by their bare feet. And it was like something, those kind of details that, you know, I probably wouldn't have noticed um, if I looked at them. And so um, I guess I'm, I'm curious if there, like in your analysis, if there were details like that, that you may have missed and needed like further research to like figure those out, like how, did you supplement those like discoveries? I guess is kind of my question. Um, if you have anything to say. Let's see. Um, I'll start. Uh, thank you for your question. And uh, I believe that um, th this, uh, uh, this, this this method to, to, to counting these images it's uh, uh, pretty much new so I'm discovering uh, uh, during uh, this uh, research uh, the, the deeply gap between uh, social uh, reality and uh, uh, um, uh, iconography uh, reality and so it, it's like uh, a, a way uh, I can find, some stereotypes, and I'm trying to understand these stereotypes to understand um, how they create uh, the the condition, the condition like they are enslaved or not. Sometimes it's really, really uh, difficult to have a a, a good uh, 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 a good opinion about one image. Sometimes I'm, I'm stopped and it's very difficult to, to fill in uh, uh, the database because I really don't know what to do with uh, uh, only one image, which make uh, uh, my, my, uh, uh, my research very inaccurate in one sense. And I don't believe that uh, I can uh, go uh, to the social uh, reality, the real life, to find some answers for, uh, for my, my questions. I, I believe that I'm going to uh, uh, find some answers uh, when I uh, uh, put all images uh, side by side, and then I'm going to see some patterns. And for instance, uh, the, the bare feet uh, can be a, a, a sign of, enslaved, uh, of slavery, uh, but uh, pro probably it's a kind of a stereotype. In real life, uh, it's, it was possible to find uh, enslaved uh, both uh, men and women uh, uh, using uh, uh, shoes. So uh, it, it's kind, it, it kind of, uh, uh, um, it's something that uh, the readers probably could understand and we are not able to understand. So sometimes I, I, I'm going to, to uh, uh, look at some uh, 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 different uh, sources, uh, uh, newspapers and parliamentary debate or even police uh, uh, documents to try to find some uh, uh, um, uh, details. For instance, I can uh, 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 instance, uh, there is a, a, a database I worked uh, years uh, ago about uh, the 
the the people that were uh, uh, locked uh, in 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 the in the jail in a 19th century Brazil, and it was very interesting because uh, we can find not just the reason they were uh, uh, locked uh, in, but uh, their clothes. So I can cross this in this uh, sources, uh, especially because uh, in this source. Uh, I can find uh, the condition. So, so uh, I can uh, do this kind of uh, exercise. I'm thinking while I'm answering you. So I believe this is a possibility and probably I will uh, going to find uh, uh, more richnesses and in uh, uh, real life than in uh, caricature. So it's, it's like a stereotypes and, and the historiography both here and uh, in the US or uh, Europe about uh, the Studio Press uh, work with uh, these stereotypes and some uh, uh, small moments where these stereotypes change it. And so we can go in and find something uh, different from uh, that, uh, 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 that meaning. But I believe that the uh, my my hypothesis is that this kind of stereotypes uh, were part of social uh, perception of uh, not just slavery but also uh, African Brazilian uh, in general. Uh, I hope I, I answer your question, start. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's super interesting. Thank you, Giovanna. Yes, thank you, Marcelo. It's really interesting to hear you thinking through these answers. And so uh, my question has become a double question, but I have to say to start with that I know, I mean, I'm, I don't know much at all about 19th century Brazil, but uh, um, my question comes from the little I know that was because of a colleague who was at Stanford and writing a uh, Christine Mann, and she was writing um, a book um, about, uh, but it, it was early 19th century Brazil, and she managed to find, it was a, it's a very interesting project, she managed to find traces, cross-reading archives in Brazil and in Lagos and Nigeria of uh, um, enslaved Africans, then spent time in Brazil and then went back, and there are not that many stories that she could follow so carefully, but the old project was exactly to be able to show this diaspora and going back and forth and these lives extending through time and with a complexity that is usually so hard to reach um, for uh, um, these uh, um, historical actors. And so my, my question, and so I have this idea of a lot of exchange, um, at least in the earlier part of the 19th century, uh, between Western Africa and Brazil through lived lives, but it could be skewed by what I know because of Christian's work. And so, but I just wonder if this is, an, and I was thinking when there was an image with um, about the, the um, abolitions with uh, uh, boats on the sea. So I just wonder what, if there is a space in this iconographic world that you are reconstructed through this research that allows for this back and forth or for something that you know that in which the African origins are present um, one uh, and what is the difference between the sea imagery and the land imagery or what you make of that and then the other thing that is building on these ideas that I had from Christian, Christian's work but also the question about photography um, is uh, as I have been exposed to this work that uh, shows the lived lives to, to old age of these people and how they, they changed, I wonder if age is something that uh, uh, has a place in this iconographic work, like, or if, when you document, when you, in your, in your database, in the categories you are identifying, like if there is a space for a uh, old age as a different category and, uh, um, or not? So th this is my question. Oh. All right, Giovanna, thank you for your image, uh, your uh, uh, questions. Uh, first, let me see if I correct understood if I'm not 
please <laughs> uh, let me know. Um, this image uh, started in Brazil in 1840s uh, when uh, the, the Atlantic uh, uh, trade was uh, uh, higher. Uh, it was illegal, but it was uh, a boom of uh, uh, illegal uh, 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 trade. Um, it, it was about 700,000 uh, illegal uh, enslaved uh, 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 for, uh, from Africa to Brazil during uh, the 20, uh, 20 years, from uh, 1831 to 1850. And so it was a, a, a really a, a, a huge amount of people uh, that was uh, illegally enslaved. And, uh, but that moment was a particular, a very a, 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 a difficult moment uh, in terms of uh, 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 pro producing uh, images. Uh, because uh, first uh, at all, uh, the, the Illustrated Press was not uh, uh, that uh, 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 strong as it was in the uh, 1860s. And then uh, uh, it was a very delicate uh, uh, theme uh, to uh, talk about. So uh, we have some uh, images from, uh, from uh, Voyager, Voyagers uh, from the beginning of 19th century. Uh, the Bre or, or other uh, uh, people like that, and Illustrator Press, it was not uh, uh, a subject, so uh, we can't find uh, this kind of uh, uh, images. And the second uh, about age, it's uh, I I didn't uh, think about it uh, because uh, usually uh, I have an image about. Uh, um, the difference uh, of age only uh, during the 80s, especially during uh, the debate of uh, parliamentary uh, law called uh, a sexagenarian law. I, I talk about it briefly in my presentation. And uh, uh, the, the idea of that law is uh, to, uh, uh, to abolish uh, uh, slavery for uh, only those uh, 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 enslaved with uh, 60 years old. So uh, it was a theme that uh, at that particular moment. I, I don't know from the rest of the, uh, the, uh, the material I have, and I probably will uh, create some new uh, 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 categories when I, uh, um, uh, uh, finally uh, move uh, the database from Excel to a new, uh, 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 a new place where I can see the images. So I can uh, put them together and uh, find, oh, age is a very good category. I have to, uh, to choose this one. So uh, that's the, the process. It's like I'm, I'm kind of blind without the images. And it's like an impression. When I look at the image, I have some impression and I, I want to turn it into objective data. And so uh, all of these uh, questions uh, might help me to uh, understand uh, this uh, context I uh, believe uh, exists. 